Namaskar. You are watching Channel Environment Nutrition. My name is Sanjay Mishra. This video is categorically for young professionals and trainees uh, working in industries, businesses and corporates. Watch this video to know whether your organization is a bulk consumer as per the e-waste management rules 2016 and further amendments. Now e-waste or electronic waste is created when an electronic product is discarded after the end use of its life. Some examples are discarded computers, office electronic equipment, entertainment devices, mobile phones, television sets and refrigerators. This includes used electronics which are destined to reuse, resale, salvage, recycling or disposal as well as reusable or secondary scraps such as copper, steel, plastic etc. The rapid expansion of technology means that a large number of e-waste is being created every minute. Now what are the legislations in India? In India Prior to the enactment of e-waste management and handling rules 2011, e-waste was covered under the hazardous waste management rules. The e-waste management and handling rules came in 2011 and it is widely known as e-waste management and handling rules 2011 and it was enacted on 12th May 2011 became effective from 1st May 2012, almost after one year. These rules were brought into force to enable recovery and uh, or reuse of uh, you know, useful materials from e-waste, thereby reducing the hazardous waste destined for uh, disposal. Or to ensure the environmentally sound management of all types of e-waste, and to address the safe and environmentally friendly handling, transporting, storing and recycling of e-waste. For the first time, the concept of extended producer responsibility EPR was introduced which made manufacturers liable for safe disposal of electronic goods. Thereafter, the e-waste management rules 2016 was enacted. Wide GSR 338E dated 23rd March 2016 in suppression of the 2011 rules and it came into effect from the 1st of October 2016. A manufacturer, dealer, refurbisher or and producer responsibility organization PRO were also brought under the ambit of these rules. PRO is a professional organization authorized or financed collectively or individually by producers which can take responsibility for collection and channelization of e-waste generated from their products to ensure environmentally sound management. An option was given for setting up of a PRO as an additional channel for implementation of EPR by producers. Further. The collection mechanism based approach was adopted for collection of e-waste by producers under EPR. Furthermore, the applicability of the rules was expanded to cover components, consumables, parts and spares of EEE in addition to equipment covered under the rules. Further, the e-waste management rules 2016 was amended wide notification GSR 261E dated 22nd March 2018 to facilitate and effectively implement uh, the electronically sound management of e-waste in India. The amendments have been made with an objective uh, of channelizing the e-waste generated in the country towards authorized to dismantlers and uh, recyclers in order to further formalize the e-waste recycling sector. The amended rules revise the collection targets under the provision of EPR with an effect from 1st October 2017 
by way of revised targets and monitoring under the Central Pollution Control Board, effective and improved management of e-waste would be ensured. As per the revised targets of e-waste collection, 10% of the quantity of waste generated shall be collected during 2017-2018. Further, there shall be a 10% increase every year until the year 2023. And after 2023, the e-waste collection target has been fixed at 70% of the quantity of waste generation. Often, industry professionals find themselves baffled with the compliance requirements with regard to e-waste management rules 2016 and e-waste management amendment rules 2018. This presentation is an attempt to clarify and clearly spell out the need for compliances required in the said rules. Now, what are the responsibilities of industries, business and corporates? See, these are the organizations, these organizations fall under the term bulk consumers. So industries fall under the term bulk consumers. The term is defined under 3.1c. That means rule 3 sub rule 1c of e-waste management rules 2016 as bulk users of electrical and electronic equipment such as central government and state government departments, public sector undertakings, banks, educational institutions, multinational organizations, international agencies, partnership and public or private companies that are registered under Factories Act 1948 or it is also called as 63 of uh, 1948 and the Companies Act 2013 also called as 18 of 2013 and health care facilities which have turnover of more than 1 crore or the healthcare facilities which have more than 20 employees. This is the definition of bulk consumer. Nevertheless, there are some exemptions. So, the e-waste rules 2016 is not applicable to 1 used lead acid batteries as covered under the batteries management and handling rules 2001 made under the act two micro enterprises as defined in the micro small and medium enterprises development act msme development act 2006 also widely known as 27 of 2006 and 3 radioactive wastes as covered under the provisions of Atomic Energy Act 1962 or it is also called as 33 of 1962 and rules made thereunder. Now the, the responsibilities of uh, the bulk consumers are clearly outlined in rule 9. Uh, first to ensure that the e-waste generated is channelized through a collection center or a dealer of authorized producer or dismantler or recycler or through the designated take back to the service provider of the producer or authorized dismantler or recycler. Ideally, the bulk consumers should enter into an agreement with any of the above and preferably with a party approved or registered or recognized by the State Pollution Control Board or the Union Territory Pollution Control Committee. Another responsibility is to maintain records of e-waste generation or generated in the form, there is a specified form, form number 2 in the e-waste management rules 2016. Such records may be scrutinized by the SPCB or 
UTPCC concerned. Now, the third one, ensure that such end of life electrical and electronic equipment are not admixed with e-waste containing radioactive material as covered under the provisions of Atomic Energy Act 1962 and rules made thereunder. Another responsibility is to file annual returns in specified form to the State Pollution Control Board or Union Territory Pollution Control Committee concerned on or before the 30th day of June for the preceding financial year. For the preceding financial year. For example, for the financial year starting 1st April 2019, and ending 31st March 2020, the submission date will be 30th day of June 2020. In case of the bulk consumer with multiple offices in a state, one annual return combining information from all the offices shall be filed to the concerned State Pollution Control Board or Union Territory Pollution Control Committee on or before the same date 30th June for the preceding financial year. Now under rule 15 it is also important to note that every manufacturer, producer, bulk consumer, collection center, dealer, refurbisher, dismantler and recycler may store the e-waste for a period of 180 days the period should not exceed 180 days and shall maintain a record of collection, sale, transfer and storage of waste and make these records available. However, the SPCB or UTPCC concerned may extend this period of storage up to 365 days in case the waste needs to be specifically stored for the development of a process for its recycling or reuse. Last but not the least, bulk consumers should create safe intermittent storage of e-waste. I hope. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked the contents, please hit the like button and share with your colleagues, your friends who can use this video. And if you didn't like, please do share a comment in the comment section. And if you have not subscribed to our channel so far, please do not forget to subscribe it and also hit the bell button on the right side of the subscription button or subscribed button. Thank you so much.